839. Welcome back to CW Iowa Live. Lou and Jackie here. Michael Jenkins, you remember Wooly Bully? Unfortunately, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you were never rocking out to that song? <laughs> and singing along with it, too, right in the car. I could see you with a convertible Mustang driving yeah. along, singing Wooly Bully. I was too young to drive them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be fun. But uh, we're here to talk about bankruptcy. That's what Michael's expertise is in. And we're going to continue on a topic that we talked about last time about adversary complaints. Yeah, so um, we're going to kind of talk about bad conduct uh, that people take that can really make their bankruptcy uh, turn out poorly. And so last time we kind of talked about conduct that um, was misuse of credit cards, uh, running the bill up before they went into bankruptcy, and then the other type of poor conduct, um, lying to the bank uh, when you were filling out your loan application and, and putting uh, false things in there either. Uh, not disclosing all your obligations to the bank before they decided whether to give you a loan or when they were determining what collateral to take to secure the loan you either uh, exaggerated the value of the things that you had or told them you had things that you didn't have so those um, I guess difficulties with the truth can uh, land somebody in hot water As I say, be because you are doing bad practices you can then be sued while you're trying to go through bankruptcy, correct? Right, and the, and the lawsuit is my debt shouldn't go away because uh, you lied. Right, and because you were doing some poor practices and those we covered in our last segment with Michael. If you missed that, go to weareiowa.com and you can catch up, but we want to continue that conversation sure. uh, this morning. So on a smaller scale, um, a, another item that um, you know, can cause problems in the bankruptcy is, again, with the use of the credit cards, there's a statute that says if you have charged uh, over $925 um, in, ca well, cash advances, okay. actually, oh, okay. within uh, 70 days before your bankruptcy, there's a presumption then that those would be non-dischargeable if a complaint was filed. Okay. So uh, that seems like a pretty low amount, to be honest with you, but um, it's a rather costly venture to go and file a lawsuit against somebody in bankruptcy. So unless you really went to town, um, we don't see that too often. And in okay. that same uh, area of the code, if you made purchases on your credit card of what they deem luxury goods of $650 within a period of 90 days before your bankruptcy, again, those are presumed to not uh, get discharged in your bankruptcy. But um, to get this presumption that they're not going to get discharged, someone's got to file this lawsuit. Okay, now you mentioned luxury goods. What type of things uh, d does that encompass? Well, things that aren't for the basic necessities of life. Um, the bankruptcy code in their definitional area, I, I think probably has a definition for mm -hmm. what those are. But those are going to be probably, you know, just frivolous things, mm -hmm. um, things that aren't needed for the household or for your health um, or everyday type things. I mean, your groceries wouldn't be deemed to be luxury goods. Okay. But if you took uh, got a couple of plane tickets to go to Florida for uh, spring break, I think that would fall that into would luxury. That would fall into that category. Okay. So if you're seen making those purchases right before you decide to file, you could be dinged for that. Yeah, and, and the, the practical thing though is, you know, these are very low amounts and uh, it's, it's rather costly for someone to file these actions. I mean, the filing fee alone uh, is about $270 and then the lawyer fees, I mean, that can go well in, into the thousands of dollars. So they're not filing these things for these small amounts. I mean, it, it would usually have to be someone that's really just gone nuts and started charging four or $5,000 uh, for these kind of things. Okay. We just don't see this too often and these small types of things as uh, counseling somebody, don't get me too excited uh, or concerned about it, that something's going to happen because it's just not practical. Okay. <clears throat> so those are kind of small things. Now, getting back to the bigger type of conduct that lands people in hot water. So uh, there's a provision that if while acting as a fiduciary, you commit what they call fraud or defalcation. Uh, that defalcation sounds like a kind of a real bad word. I, I think it's just stealing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, um, so a, a fiduciary relationship is a relationship of trust where you've been placed into a special capacity that you're uh, in charge of somebody's money. Typical things are um, if you're a conservator of somebody's estate, uh, if you're a trustee of somebody's trust, 
Um, these are the type of things where you've been uh, made a court officer actually and you're handling other people's money and, and there's some other situations where you can be put into this uh, um, extent of trust and if you're taking care of people's money and uh, instead helping yourself to people's money um, and then later on you try to file bankruptcy when they sue you for stealing their money um, that is going to be a really big problem um, and so in the same code provision larceny embezzlement uh, those theft so when you okay. read in the newspaper about these people, it unfortunately happens way too often that we're working at their job uh, and they stole money uh, because they had gambling problems or addiction problems and things like that. Um, those people end up owing that money uh, to those employers and there's usually criminal charges that get filed and if they try to file bankruptcy on it, um, it isn't going to go away. Um, there, somebody was harmed, uh, and it's usually not just ten thousand dollars. These things tend to go into you know fifty, a hundred thousand dollars, wow. and um, you know there, no one's going to let them get away with it. They're going to file something in their bankruptcy that says, "Uh, uh, you're not getting out of this one," and it's a slam dunk. Uh, the person loses. There's no excuse. Bankruptcy so doesn't wipe everything clean. Uh, so bankruptcy yeah. no, doesn't no reward. No sense in wasting any, wasting any time on that one because that one's not going. There on. really isn't. And okay. so, but, you know, unless you had other debts you needed to get rid of. But yeah, bankruptcy just doesn't reward bad conduct. Got it. Okay. Um, Good uh, to and, know. And some of these things, you know, I guess they seem sort of obvious when you think about it. I mean, it, it makes sense that this kind of conduct isn't going to be rewarded because mm -hmm. a lot of these are intentional acts. But obviously I mean, these are in place because it's been tried. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, and these aren't any accidents when this happens. I mean, when you mismanage your money, most people didn't plan to mismanage their money or to have bad things happen to them in life. Mm -hmm. uh, but these are the incidences where people are knowingly doing bad stuff. Okay. They know they're lying. They know, you know, they're just doing these bad things and stealing. So they will be held accountable. They're held accountable. Mm -hmm. okay. Now another one of these exceptions to discharge is for willful and malicious injury to property or person. So these typically happen uh, when somebody's been a victim of an assault. Uh, we see people have gotten into a fight, barroom brawl, something like that. And in those incidences where somebody really got hurt kind of badly, um, then they will be able to uh, pursue that person in the bankruptcy so that that debt doesn't go away. Sometimes they've already gotten a civil judgment for the assault. Um, another common place we see this happen is again in the business world, um, if a business has taken the collateral that they've pledged to the bank or the lending institution that was supposed to be around so if the debt couldn't be paid, the bank could seize that property and sell it and apply it to the loan. Like a car, if you don't pay it, they can repossess it. While in business, we're talking about equipment, inventory uh, of a store, uh, accounts receivables for a business that once they've gone out of business, those monies can be collected. These are all things that are generally collateral, so if things go badly with the business, then the lending institution can get some of their money back. And this also is in farming where you've got crops and farm equipment. Well, the farmers are not allowed to go take those crops that have been pledged as collateral and go sell them outside the county to some place in secret right. and take that money and use it for themselves. Right. Uh, that money was supposed to go to the bank or farm service or somebody like that. And if they do those kind of things, uh, if they end up in bankruptcy, um, those banks, and some of them are backed by government entities, uh, they, they don't like that. And uh, they will file one of these complaints to have that debt excluded from the bankruptcy. Uh, sometimes people have gotten upset with their lender and they've destroyed collateral. Uh, I was going to say, go, what about destroying your crops? Right. If you're saying, it, it, I can't it, have it, no one can have exactly. it. Exactly. And if you destroy the collateral intentionally, and that can be proven again, that kind of conduct's not going to be rewarded in bankruptcy. So there's this whole laundry list of bad conduct that uh, if you've engaged in it, uh, there's going to be serious doubt as to whether you're going to have a successful bankruptcy. So the, the good thing is not to engage in dishonest and intentionally harmful conduct, either right. in your interactions with other individuals or business entities that you're dealing with because there's going to be a price to pay. It's going to come back to bite you. Now, 
There's other conduct that can result in your whole bankruptcy getting uh, ripped apart where you don't get one. Oh. And so uh, it's not just one creditor that's got a, uh, a beef with you. That's where um, your entire case is done and all the debts that you thought you were going to get out of aren't going to happen. So these are those complaints I mentioned the last time. They're called 727 complaints. Uh, it's a code section and this is for, again, bad conduct. Um, some of the typical things are if you have been asked by the court trustee to provide information during the case and you just completely refuse to cooperate with the trustee, <clears throat> if they ask for records, if they ask you to cooperate in turning over property that's not protected, uh, an action can be brought to completely deny your bankruptcy mm -hmm. because uh, you have an obligation to cooperate with the officers of the court that are uh, administering this case and failure to do so um, can be devastating and uh, and they take those actions once in a while. So being defiant is not to your best interest. Not at all. How often do you have to deal with cases like this around here? <laughs> not, hopefully not too often. Not but too often, but they, know, they do happen. It does happen. I mean, uh, I, I'm not going to say a percent and it, it is rare based on the volume of cases, but every once in a while you end up with a person that doesn't use very good discretion and sometimes people under stress do uh, use bad judgment. True, um, very true. Another thing that uh, if, you, if you lie during your bankruptcy in the paperwork that you filed and commit false oaths, besides it being a crime, a federal crime mm -hmm. called bankruptcy crime or fraud, um, you can lose your bankruptcy. So you can't lie on the paperwork you file that you know, intentionally lie or misrepresent. Mm -hmm. And when you're asked questions, when you go to your legal proceedings uh, in front of the trustee or anybody else, again, it's all under oath, you can't lie. If you do, uh, you can say goodbye to your bankruptcy. Uh, it's not going to go through. Now, during a bankruptcy, we've talked about how certain assets are protected. Well, people sometimes have assets that are not protected and those assets are supposed to get uh, liquidated, meaning sold by the trustee or allowing a person to buy it back for money to go to the creditors. And if a person uh, s sells themselves or hides it or right. won't cooperate, they can lose their bankruptcy yeah, you don't for doing do those kind of things. things. All right, so if you, again, you're in this position here, you're going through any of this, uh, this is the guy you want to get a hold of uh, for all the advice of what you should and shouldn't do. Just just keep it on the up and up. And say, don't yeah. stress out, yeah. don't make the wrong yeah. decisions, make the right decision and get in touch with someone who knows what's going on. Uh, and how can they get in touch with you, Michael? Oh, well, you can reach me on phone at 255-1855. You can find us on the internet at www.iowa-bankruptcy law.com or you can follow us on Facebook. That works. Thank Sounds you, Michael. Sounds good. Thank you. 852, we will be right back.